All right, let's get this started. My name is Grant. For the past month, I have been doing daily vlogs of my trip around America. This is going to be a tutorial of how I edit so fast. After 30 days, you bet your butt I've gotten very good at editing. Now before we get started, I know you just want to skip ahead, so do that if you want. We're going to go through three stages. First is the rough edit. This is where you get your main idea out onto the timeline. Second step is your junk removal. That's removing all the pauses and the stupid stuff in between the things that you actually want to say. And three, we're going to add music. Add music is last for a very good reason, and I'll show you later. So let's get started. It's presumed that you already have your footage copied to your computer, because that saves time and you should know how to do that already. Now, I'm editing on a very basic laptop. It's only got a dual core i7 and that's about it. No dedicated graphics card, nothing. So we're gonna start off with a new project. We're gonna name it, uh, what episode are we on? 33. And I just have everything dumped into general project files. I found that's a lot easier than dumping it into your footage. So you hit okay, everything else, same as it is. Now, before we even get started, you can go up to, where is it? The only shortcut that I have modified is the S key. I've changed S key to add edit. Command stop, and then add edit. I don't know if that's stock, but everything else is completely stock. These are the default key binds, so you should have to change basically nothing. All right, import media, double click. Let's go to the right episode. Control A, selects all. Open, imports them. And then you wait a minute. Where is it? Okay, your files are imported. Click on this little sort option and click by name. This will put it all in chronological order, which for some reason Premiere does not do by default. So here we have our first clip. By hovering over it, you can see generally what's in it, and I never use that. However, I can tell by the time code here, this one's only four seconds long, and it's going to be one of the ones that my camera decided to just stop early. So let's check it. Good morning, Washington. Good morning, Wa As you can see there, I had to restart it because my camera does weird things. The two keys that you're really going to want to know here is spacebar, which is play and pause, or stop at the current time, and the I and O key. I designates in. Good morning, Washington. O designates out. So what you want to do is use your in and out markers to make a clip, basically. Good, good morning, Washington. I actually don't know what we're doing today, so I'm going to head towards town and hopefully get some signal. So that's where I stop. So on the first clip that you add to your project, you actually have to drag it into the sequence to create a new sequence. More keyboard shortcuts to learn here. Up and down. Down is skip to the next edit, up is skip to the previous edit. So if I put an edit in here, and I use the up and down keys, my playhead snaps to it. Alright, scroll back up to the top. You will see your footage, your timeline, which for some reason goes into the footage bin, and then the next clip that you want. So this is actually the next clip in my project. So here I do a punch zoom, and go right there, about there. Now this is very important. Your hand can basically be off the mouse for the rest of the time, because what we're going to do is press the comma key and the left arrow bracket thing, and what that does is it inserts whatever's in your preview window into your timeline down here. This is why we use the up and down arrow keys on the timeline to make sure we're at the end and a blank screen. Because otherwise, if you're somewhere random, it does this. Yeah, it just kind of sticks it right in the middle. Just stupid. Control Z to undo. Not a problem. On to the next clip, and you get the idea. So, so this, this is a place called Ape Cave? Cave sounds cool. There's a bunny rabbit over there. Okay, so you might come across things like this where you ramble on and you just want to see what's in the clip, but scrubbing 
you can't really hear yourself. So what you want to know is the J and the L keys. So while you're playing, L speeds up time. And speeds up again. And speeds up again. And J reverses time. K stops. It's the same as spacebar, except it doesn't resume for some reason. Right, so cave sounds like something cool to do. Might as well. If you are editing through really go fast, like this, pause and then hit pause again, and it'll go back down to real time, which is convenient. Comma to stick it down on the timeline. Now you might notice you can't really see everything on the timeline anymore. That's okay, you can press the left slash key just above your enter key, and the timeline will zoom out to fit everything that's in it. This is useful mostly for step two and three, but I just like to be able to see what I can see. So I actually want two things out of this. One, I want the opening. Close enough. And two, I want down here. Okay. So my headlamp's not really that bright. Where I comment on how bright my headlamp is not. Okay. So my headlamp's not really that bright. And that's basically all I want out of that clip, I think. So this is a literal case that you can just walk through. Yeah, nothing else really fits the narrative there. So let's on to the next clip. So you can't see much on video, and I can't see much myself. So, time for a picture montage. Okay, past me was kind of a jerk, because the picture montage is all in RAW files. So let me just go convert all these to JPEG in Lightroom, and we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. I now have a folder inside my footage that says Cave Crap. I'm basically going to replicate that by coming down here, making a new bin, calling it Cave Crap, opening the bin, and importing all those photos. Import files. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing, sort by name. Oh, it's already done it. Select all again, and we're gonna right click on them. We're actually gonna hit speed duration first. So I want all these to be 1.3 seconds, I believe. And then I'm going to select all of them and throw them down in the timeline the same way, comma key. And they're all there. So now we can watch a quick slideshow. Actually, no, we got to change some settings first. So now that they're all down in your timeline, select them all, right click, scale to frame size. Oh, look at that. They're all the right size now. And you can see them in an HD video, even though that they're, you know, 5,000 pixels on an edge. As you can tell, a lot of them are really grainy. Well, guess what? They were shot in a cave in one second while I was holding it still with my hand. You know what? You can't complain much. So let's go back down to our footage and carry on. I would not have minded. It's a little, it's a little cold in here. I would not have minded a jacket or an extra flashlight. So I can't remember the last time I charged my headlamp. Good enough. Whoops! I didn't go to the end. You see that? So got to highlight the timeline, hold down the down arrow, and that brings you back to the end. It's black. We can come back here, press comma. There's our footage again. By the way, I'm filming this outside, and there's a couple of yellow jackets swarming around, so hopefully they'll go away. All right. Well, well Ape Cave, it's been cool, but I'm going to head back before I get lost, and it's really chilly down here. So that's kind of cold, like really cold. This place is cool. If I had a better light and a jacket, 
I'd be down here for a few hours. Well, back to the surface. Okay, so I'm using basically till the end of that. I don't have to set my out point because the out point is automatically set to the very last frame of the video in your preview. Comma again. You get the idea of how this is going. That was cool. I did not expect to go caving today. I'm much warmer now. That's nice. Can feel my fingers. Um, yeah, okay. Back to the road. Okay, so here I just ramble on and I can cut that out. Can up. feel my fingers. Um, yeah, okay. Back to the road. Super but I do want the phrase back to the road. Back to the road. And that's just skill of hitting spacebar at the right time. Now there is a bunch of crap in this footage that I don't want, but I'm still going to put it down on the timeline because that is step two, removing the crap. So basically all of that. This Walmart's a different color. Ice, milk, more tangerines. If not, I'm gonna be very hard disappointed. It doesn't crash anymore. I am pleasantly surprised. All right, so let's just jump cut to when I've blocked out the rest of the footage. All right, we're back. Step two, junk removal. I have blocked out my entire episode. It's about six minutes long. That's longer than I would like. I want to aim for the four to five minute mark for this episode since not a ton of stuff happens. So let's scrub back to the beginning, hold down alt and use your scroll wheel and you can zoom in on stuff. Let's zoom in right on down to the first clip. Now let's see what we can cut out. Now the keys I'm going to be using here are the S tool that splits and the Q and W tool. The Q and W tool is based on where your playhead is. So if your playhead is here and you press Q, it's going to cut everything to the left of it up until the past cut. If your playhead is here and you press W, it's going to cut everything past that to the next cut. So it's good for trimming the ends off things or or pressing S right at the end of a sentence and then Q right at the beginning of the next sentence, cutting out the pause in between. So let's see what we can remove out of this one. Good morning, Washington. I actually don't know what we're doing today, so I'm going to head towards town and hopefully get some signal. So there's a little bit of remainder footage here that I don't actually need, so I'm going to use W and trim it out. That's about as far as I want for that clip, just for the pacing that I generally go for. So I'm going to press W again, and it cuts into the for the next clip. This is a place called Ape Cave. And here you can look down at these waveforms and tell when you're going to talk and when you're not going to talk. And eventually you'll get an idea of how long your pauses are and what pauses can be cut and what can't because there is a bit of pacing that pauses add. Ugh. Cave sounds cool. And since we did such a fast cut back here, we want to continue the fast cut bit for at least a little bit. Cave? So split, go forward a little bit, Q, cuts that out. Cave? Cave sounds cool. I don't want to say cave twice. Ape cave? Cave sounds cool. So, cave sounds cool. So now it looks like. Ape cave sounds cool. Boom. Instant. Go away. There's freaking yellow jackets everywhere. Okay, so I press split again. I can tell there's a big pause here. Just gonna go to about the end of it. Press Q again. There's a bunny rabbit over there. So here it gets all whited out and you can't really see anything, so you might as well skip to where it hops away, which is right there. And right there. We don't need to see it turn back around to me, so we'll cut right there. Right, so cave sounds like something cool to do. Might as well. Okay, 
Now you can't really see the rabbit because it's far away. So what we're going to do is we're going to double click on the clip, go into effect controls, scale it up, and then use these to move over to where the rabbit is. And now you can see the rabbit. Additionally, what I might do is go over here to effects and you can search for it, but I've put it into a custom folder. There's a thing called warp stabilizer. Warp stabilizer is considered magic to basically every single vlogger. You take it, you drag it on your clip. Over here it says analyzing. There it says analyzing if you could see and it was zoomed out. Zoom out of it. Never mind. So warp stabilizer does its magic. It takes a minute because my computer is a little CPU bound with no graphics card. Okay, while warp stabilizer is applying, you can't actually do anything or it'll pause the make warp stabilizer go. So now it looks like this. Smoother, but a little high. So we're just going to come back down. Right. Looks good to me. On with the editing. Right, so, cave sounds like something cool to do. Might as well. Starting at the cave, I want to start slowing down the pacing so that my next joke comes in a lot stronger. Okay. So my headlamp's not really that bright. So you can't see much on video. I can't see much myself. So, time for a picture montage. Okay, so here's the picture montage. Obviously, when you're doing a montage, you need music. So we're actually going to combine the junk removal and add music parts. So I'm going to come over here to Adventure Diary, Incompetech. Which one was it? Quirky Dog. If you're doing a montage and you want to poke fun at something, this is the soundtrack to use. <laughs> So I'm just going to fast forward, that looks like about right. So we're going to grab this little icon out here, it says drag audio only. I'm going to throw that down here. Oh no, I didn't make it long enough. I can just drag it out. So now let's see if I guessed right. So that one doesn't need to be here, so I press delete. Okay, so that's about all I'm going to need. Now, what I want to do is make the photos change to the beat of the music. And sadly, that's actually done a little bit manually. So we'll start with our first one. And it needs to be that long. Now, this song is actually a little irregular in its beat. So I actually want to kind of change up the timings. But I'm going to show you this little trick because I know a lot of you guys will be editing to more standard music. So, you want to change the time of all of these. What you do is you right click and you do speed duration and you bring it, say, down a bit. So now they're all 0.22 seconds. Then you have all these gaps and you could go through manually and ripple delete, but that's going to take forever. So what you want to do down here is do new black video. And it gets put up here. Black video. Okay. So you're going to stretch your black video out as long as you need it. So right now I need it about that long. Lock your music track. If you lock your music track, it can't make any changes. Highlight all your pictures, drag them up, drag them down. Highlight what remains of the black video and you're ready for this. Press delete. Everything's now the new size. There is no quicker way to do that. If you want to change the speed of a bunch of pictures in your timeline, that's basically the only way to do it that I know of. I could be wrong. So let's just undo all that. And I will change the timing. So be right back. And a couple minutes later, we're back and we have a sequence that has very irregularly timed photos but still goes along to the beat of the music, slightly, like so. You 
you can see at the end it goes into more of a 4-4 time instead of this weird 3-4. I guess that's why they call it Quirky Dog. I don't think I've actually used this song in my videos before. Which one do I normally use? This is the song I normally use in my videos. As always, hit up Kevin McLeod and Compatech.com. They have all your useless song needs. But we're going to stick with this one because I already edited it that way. Moving on. It's a little cold in here. It's dark out. You can't tell that there would be any jump cuts. So I'm going to add a ton. Split. Left and right arrows jump forward and backwards a few frames depending on your zoom level. It's easy to skip to right at the beginning or at the end of where you're going to start or stop talking. I would not have minded a jacket or or an extra flashlight. So I can't remember the last time I charged my headlamp. Well, ape cave. Okay, I add the pauses in there because what we're trying to do is create a little bit of drama and it makes it a little more authentic. And yes, everyone's using the same technique for years, but you know what, the formula works. Don't try to go against it. It's been cool. But I'm gonna head back before I get lost. And it's really chilly down here. So that's kind of cold. Like, really cold. This place is cool. If I had a better light and a jacket, I'd be down here for a few hours. Well, back to the surface. Okay, so all I was doing there was doing S to start my cut, and then pausing where I wanted to end my cut and pressing Q to cut back to where I pressed S. I know it's a little confusing, but eventually your fingers just kind of go into this position where you have your thumb on space and your ring finger on S, which also presses Q. It's basically like you're playing a first-person shooter. You can't see much after that, so might as well cut. I'm out. It's cold. Well, I'm warm now. I couldn't feel my fingers at all. This headlamp kind of sucks. And of course the Chinesium battery died. Okay, now here I would cut, but closing the door is an important part of the pacing that I'm doing right here. Battery died. After giving some lessons to the locals on what settings you should use in the cave, which is basically as wide as your aperture will go, as high as your eyes will go, about one second of exposure, because you can't keep it hold still for that long. So all this here is tech speak. You don't actually need any of that. So we're going to grab, where is it? There it is. It's right here, or you can press R on your keyboard to select it. This is the rate stretch tool. It lets you drag in or stretch out mu video, music, whatever you want to make it faster or slower. I basically want all this to go in fast speed so it sounds like I'm talking like a chipmunk because it's useless garble goop that you don't really need in the video. Cave? About one second of exposure. Because you can't keep it hold still for that long. And I'll give you. Sir. And I'll give you. Cave? Basically, as long as the actual go, as high as the ISO go. About one second of exposure. And I'll give you serviceable photos. Well. That was cool. I did not expect to go caving today. Pause it. Um, play it. Here I can see a pause that I don't need for the timing. So I can just I'm much that warmer out. now. That's nice. Can feel my fingers. <laughs> don't need that part. Uh, yeah. Okay, back to the road. I forgot to say how long I was down there. Uh, according to my stopwatch. I was down there for 10 minutes on the return trip, and I was booking it pretty well. So I'd say I was down there for about 30 minutes. You get the idea. You actually don't have to go back if you're well-timed enough, just pressing space and S and Q, 
and it will cut out everything that you don't need without actually having to drag back. I do have my hand on the mouse just in case I have to quickly click backwards and try again if I missed cutting it exactly how I wanted. Okay, so there, I felt good about that. I know I nailed the cuts. I don't have to watch them back. This Walmart's a different color. I don't need this intro bit, so... This that. Walmart's a different color. I don't need the end bit, so I can cut that off. That's just Q and W. No need for S. Ice. Milk. More tanger. So there, I made the first two pieces of information at the same pacing that the third piece of information now comes, because I had a bit of a brain stun, because they're not actually tangerines, they're clementines. But you know what, I'm going to cut that part out too. Ice, milk, more tangerines. Now it sounds a little more natural. And I just stayed inside using their Wi-Fi and downloaded the new update for my LG G6. It's still upgrading at 75%. Hopefully they fix the Bluetooth crashing bug. If not, I'm going to be very highly disappointed. So there I saw, again, more information I didn't need, more information I can cut out. It doesn't crash anymore. I am pleasantly surprised. It's a library. It has internet. You know what's about to go down. Okay, look. I don't want to seem entitled, but in 2017, if a public library does not have, at the very least, a half a gigabit connection, what business do now, here's the problem when filming inside a car. You can't actually rely on the waveforms to tell you when you start and stop talking, which sucks quite badly. So here I do have to go back a few more times before I get a cut that I'm happy with. Okay, so during this driving montage bit, which I know stretches out for quite a while, all we want to do is give enough visual information that they get the idea of what's going on. So you want to start playing a song in your head. For me, it's actually just a metronome. One, two, three, four. And you want to cut along to that, so watch. One, two, three, four. Cut. And we don't need this part, so. One, two, three, four. Pause. I'm going to press W this time so I don't have to use my mouse. One, two, three, four. W. It's a sunflower farm. Now it's dirt patch. So let's count how many beats that was. It's one, a sunflower two, farm. Four, one, now two, it's dirt patch. Four. That actually fits pretty well, because then it's a double measure. So you have three single measures. And these two clips are actually the same. So now I can have two clips that, if combined, would create the length of a third clip. So what you have here is technically four air quotes, bars of video editing. Just a little musical stuff I like to put in, even if there's no music being played in the background. There I'm using, again, the same techniques. Pause, split, cue, memory of where things were, left and right arrow keys, and you can hear just a little burst of audio that gives you an idea of when you're about to speak or stop. We're speaking. at our parking spot for the night. It's 9.30. So this is the end bit. I can see my waveforms again of when I'm talking and when I'm not, so I can cut them down very quickly. So split, play, pause, cue. 932. Split, pause, cue. Four miles of very, very washboard road would be the best description of getting out here. And the fog continues. All I can see is the moon. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye. As always, the lens swoosh. So, you now have this project file. Wow, look at all those cuts. And it's only been, what, maybe 30 minutes, if that, to edit all this? Relatively quick. Always control S to save your work. And then when you're done, you can do file, export, media, and I actually just leave whatever the default settings are. They're actually pretty good as far as the file size go. Uh, what's our final time? 458. All right. What was our third step? Add music. We added music. And I already told you about the trick where you lock 
And when you lock, you can split and Q and W all you want to your heart's content to the footage above without actually affecting the music below, which is very nice. Remember that lock button. It will come in handy. All right, before we export, hold down the down arrow, go to the end, press O, because you want to create the in and out markers over your entire timeline. This will make it easier when you go to export, export, media, name it. Whoops. Episode 33, add a 33. What am I going to call this episode? Let's see. I want to call it the old over-under, because I was above land and underland. But I also want something a little bit better. So we're going to call it um, Went Caving because I'm a creative person and not many people watch my videos anyway. Save. Well, all these things are default, basically. Uh, so, export. And away it goes. So, let's pretend that that's all done exporting. The last thing to do is to scrub through your timeline and pick a thumbnail, because YouTube doesn't pick very good thumbnails by default. I've decided on this picture to make as my thumbnail. So I'm going to click the little export frame button, but I notice that there are some black bars. So what I'm actually going to do is temporarily fix that. So I'm going to double click on the image, effect controls, scale, and just zoom in slightly. So now it's a 1920 by 1080 photo. I click export frame. I've got it set to go straight to my desktop. And we come over and press Control z and that zooms it back out to 100%. Uh, I'm lazy, that way I don't have to open up a photo editor, whatever. So let's go back to exporting, because I didn't actually export it last time, and we'll close out this video. Alright, we are exporting. I actually renamed it to I Found a Cave, because that implies the exploration part that I do love championing. That I do love championing. Champion champion ch promoting promoting is a good word that i know how to pronounce all right let's close this out i hope you learned how to edit a little bit oh no i just realized i left out okay so we're gonna cancel that and i realized i forgot an entire section audio mixing audio is half of your video see here half video half audio Sometimes you can't hear a clip, as in the clip might be too quiet. So here are some keyboard shortcuts to aid you in mixing audio. Your bracket keys next to that slash key we learned to zoom out on the timeline. Well, those little bracket keys bring the volume up and down. So if I go over here into effect controls, you can watch it. Here's volume. That's all keyboard. So the right one turns up the volume, and the left one turns down the volume. Now, 6 dB might not be enough volume. So what if you want more? Well, click on your clip, press G, and it'll come up with audio gain. As a general rule of thumb, just press 5 and listen to it. And if it's still too quiet, press G again, press 5 again and do it again and again until it's loud enough. Now you will start to hear some hissing in the background, and that's because you're turning up the gain, not the volume. If you want to learn more about gain versus volume, watch another YouTube video, because I don't really want to explain it. Do that as you listen through your video, and you will set the volume level for basically all the clips. Now, as I was editing, I didn't actually hear anything that sounded bad enough to need changing the volume level on basically anything. There was nothing super loud, there was nothing super quiet. And I was listening through headphones. Try to edit through headphones if you can, because there are a lot of people on YouTube who also listen to your videos or watch them with headphones. And we've all seen the comment section where they say, rest in peace headphone users, as someone starts screaming into a mic. And no one wants that. Any other keyboard shortcuts I really, really like? I think that's about all the shortcuts I use in a daily vlog type edit. So now we can go back to exporting again and maybe we can close this video out.
So now we can go and maybe we can close this video. I realized I forgot an entire video out. So now we can go and maybe we can close this video. I realized I forgot an entire video out. So now we can go and maybe we can close this video. I realized I forgot an entire Which one do I normally use? So now we can go and maybe we can close this video. I realized I forgot an entire Which one do I normally use? And maybe we can close this video. So now we can go I realized I forgot an entire video out. So now we can go I realized I forgot and maybe we can close this video. So now we can go video out. I realized I forgot an entire and maybe we can close this video. So now we can go video out. I realized I forgot an entire and maybe we can close this video. So now we can go video out. Which one do I normally use? And maybe Okay. I think I covered everything now. So, I hope this teaches you how to become really fast at editing blogs. And if it didn't, I mean, I'm really sorry for wasting your time, but this is the system that works best for me. Previously, I used to edit on Sony Vegas, and I got very, very fast editing with that program. But to be honest, once you learn the keyboard shortcuts and you've been at it for a little bit in Premiere, everything is so much ridiculous that I can't describe how much faster I can edit this footage. I guess it's just time for the outro. Thank you very much for watching. As always, come over and watch the vlogs if you can. This is my first extra video that I'm producing on the road. Every day I produce a vlog that goes up on YouTube every day at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. I have skipped only one day, and that's just because I couldn't find internet in the middle of a very large state park. There are some great episodes to look forward to, such as going inside a cave, which you've technically already watched, but you could always click the link in the description to be taken to the final edit to see what we actually produced here. There's going to be some great episodes coming up. I've got some very scenic places I'm going to, and that's about all I can say because I don't actually know what these scenic places look like. As always, thank you very much for watching, and goodbye. I can't do a lens smash. Dang it.